Uh, thanks, thanks everybody. Uh, I'm Lance Wilder. I'm a designer with The Simpsons, one of many uh, very talented people. Thank you. What do you like? Oh, you've heard of it. Good. Okay. It's a fairly new show. I've been doing it for 27 years. Um, I've had the uh, privilege and pleasure of working with so many amazing people over these last 27 years, a dream come true. Um, I, I have a, a love for art and music. It's, uh, I want to thank Atta and Lisa for inviting me to honor Dan tonight. And uh, I just wanted to say that um, this, this is a great thrill. And um, just over the years, we were asking for highlights. Um, when I moved out here, it's like one of the first shows I got to do was working, uh, designing for Ringo Starr. Having a love of British music and the Beatles, then Sir Paul and his uh, former, uh, his late wife Linda, and the late George Harrison, among many, many others. The fact that I get to design shows with these people, and it kind of opened a door. Dan, uh, we had mutual friends that he wanted to know about The Simpsons, and we met. And he had, he wrote The Caped Crusader, a biography of Rick Wakeman of Yes. Uh, who you've been longtime friends with, and that opened up a door of friendship between me and Dan and Dan's family over all these years. And um, I just wanted to say that um, it's an honor to, to know Dan, and he's the real deal. In a world where we have so much information overload, it's hard to find the real deal, truth, and a love for people and a respect for people. I mean, Dan, I didn't even know all this, but just over the years to find out Dan is so humble. Um, he's been with Mother Teresa. He's interviewed um, uh, Mahalia Jackson and Coretta Scott King and incredible historical figures, as well as uh, his love and knowledge of music, Sir Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, who over the last few years has taught my kids and I peace and love, peace and love, if you guys know Ringo. Um, just a great guy who, who uh, promotes that. And um, I know there's a God of love and forgiveness and creativity who, sh who smiles upon events like this to use our talents and our gifts. You just can't have enough love and peace and forgiveness and uh, toward people, whether you agree with them or not. Um, Dan has always been an inspiration for my four kids and myself. He's been there behind the scenes when the camera's off, when the microphone's off. He's always checking up on me and my kids. And I've never really known a more generous person um, who really loves and cares about people. And here's one of his sons, Peter. I'll let you take it. Thank you, guys. Hi. Big love from the UK. Great to be here tonight and uh, such an honor to honor my father who has inspired me to follow in his footsteps as a journalist, but really trying to bring good news in such uh, dire times, particularly in the UK with all the terror attacks I've been reporting on the humanitarian work that's happening over there. And um, I have the privilege of uh, reading a tribute from a man who my father interviewed while he was wearing a kilt, which is uh, quite unusual. Uh, it's Pat Boone. It says, Dan, dear brother, behind your back and occasionally to your face I call you Apostle Dan, as in the Apostles Paul and John and Peter in the Bible. Why? Because these others are recognized and honored apostles or messengers of the gospel, which means and is good news. And that's always been your specialty, good news, not sensational or criminal or critical or morbid or salacious, not slanted or biased or political, but instead factual, objective, uplifting, commending, even inspirational, but unfailingly good news. You're always searching for the best in people and their activities and projects. Not the embarrassing or titillating or morally questionable, although that would attract readers. No, you look for and report the stories of people and events that underscore the better sides of our natures and our efforts to make things better for others. Whenever I get a call that you'd like to interview me, I stop and question, wait a minute, what has Dan heard about some hopeful or charitable or worthy thing I'm involved in? Whatever it is, I know Dan will, will present it in the most favorable light. That's what you do and who you are. I was just reading about you in Isaiah 52, 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Dan, you are a faithful and skilled apostle of good news, and I'll bet you have beautiful feet. 
Love you. Pat Boone. It's my privilege to present to my father the Humanitarian Spirit, Peace and Love Award. Thank you very much. I, I am a very confused person. I was born in Nigeria, West Africa, uh, but raised in Britain. So I now live here. I'm an African-American. You, <laughs> you won't get many African-Americans who look like me. But uh, one of my first interviews ever was Coretta Scott King. And she was at St. Paul's Cathedral in London to speak on behalf uh, she was actually at the memorial service. She was the first woman ever allowed to speak at St. Paul's Cathedral from the uh, pulpit there. Also, Mahalia Jackson, the great lady, the great singer. And uh, I eventually got involved working in the British tabloids. And if you want to know if those stories are true, I can't tell you, my lips are sealed. But um, also worked for the National Enquirer, which was full of... Brits, because we're the world's greatest writers of junk. Um, we've, made, we've turned junk into an art form. But some years ago, I lost my way. My religious faith had gone. I was drinking very heavily. And I was in a bar in London called The Stab in the Back. What a great name for a, a pub for journalists, where they literally verbally stabbed each other in the back. And a friend came in. And he said, look at you, Dan. He said, you're a really good writer, but you do nothing but write drivel. And I said, Ray, why don't you just go play in the traffic? Well, he didn't think that was a very good idea. And uh, he said, look, I'm going to challenge you to quit your career in journalism, that sort of journalism. Come with me to Uganda and write the story of Idi Amin. He's murdered half a million people. And I did it. I walked out on my career in London, and I went to Uganda. We wrote a book together called Uganda Holocaust, which was the horror story of that period where the killings were going on in Uganda. And I met so many heroes that I made a decision. That's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, was to be a voice for the voiceless, to write, to broadcast, and to be involved, to be involved in the lives of people that maybe they don't have a PR person, they don't have anyone to make them famous, and so I have a network of writers. I run a news service. You can check it out at assistnews.net. I have a radio show and two television programs, and I devote them to telling the story about the people who have no voice. So I want to thank you for this. This has been a lot of fun tonight to be with a lot of you. And remember, I am still an African-American. Thank you. <laughs>